Hey everyone, my name is Scott Sumner. I'm the CMO at Kadiska. Thanks to everyone here who is from the Salesforce community to join me today. Uh, I'm gonna go through some interesting points about Salesforce, how it's architected, what causes most of the performance issues and what you can do to fix it. And then we'll demonstrate how Salesforce looks uh, using live, live traffic today. So let's get started and take a look at the reason why Salesforce is a difficult SaaS application to troubleshoot. And you can see here on the screen that, you know, Salesforce is part of a, a large modern complex infrastructure. So hosts in, this, in, uh, in the cloud, of course, but more than one host. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Salesforce is also often integrated into other applications, whether they're on force.com or there are other SaaS applications like, for example, SAP or Microsoft Dynamics or other applications that need to communicate to integrate with Salesforce and to add enriched functionality into it. So plugins, third-party programs that are also accessible uh, from within Salesforce. And then you also have private data centers that connect and other cloud applications. So really a complex matrix of connectivity, but also API calls flying back and forth to make sure your applications work correctly. You also have people working at home now, uh, more often than ever, uh, accessing in through VPN or, or maybe directly through uh, direct internet access or a secure web gateway like a CASB or an SSE. And also, of course, the on-premise workers, there's still a few of them left, right, to have to go through either uh, different kinds of connectivity to get to Salesforce. So all these different uh, attributes that we have here make it extremely difficult to monitor uh, Salesforce because the hosts are diverse, the users are distributed, and the interconnectivity and the network performance and the devices used to get them is really always fluently changing. So. We can imagine as uh, Salesforce administrators and people who work with it every day, including the users, there's, there's a lot of frustration that's involved in trying to pinpoint where problems originate from. So really, we know Salesforce is complex. Anybody who's used it or built it out, but how complex is it exactly? If we take an example of just one day from one site of users accessing Salesforce in one simple cloud application, you can see the complex network paths and connectivity from at the bottom there on the right, AWS. So something hosted in the Amazon Web Services trying to connect in with the uh, Salesforce platform as a service of so force.com. And then one site in Vancouver trying to access Salesforce through their CDN. You end up with 11 service providers, 18 different host names that are connecting to at the same time or over different periods of time and thousands of different unique routes to get there. So this is a very dynamic environment. And that's just one day, one site and one cloud. So you can imagine what it looks like when uh, you, you're moving from the home to the office or integrating many different applications. So we'll take a look at how to collapse that complexity and really see it easily. We've looked at the complexity. We know there's issues with Salesforce, but how common is it really for the users at home or at work or at the office or your partners accessing it? What we've learned from a research from user lane and from Salesforce itself that they published is that about 35% of employees are losing more than an hour per week due to degraded performance. So their productivity is getting impacted because Salesforce isn't responsive, it's not loading properly, they're waiting for reports, but really more degraded than normal. So really uh, unresponsive applications that let people uh, go focus on other things while they're waiting for Salesforce to uh, resume its, its regular level of uh, responsiveness. In addition to that, because of the SLAs and the guarantees and the different diverse hosting locations, on average, uh, Salesforce is down about 8.5 hours per year. So you're losing uh, nearly two weeks of productive time uh, because of the way that people work across different time zones and because of the way they're accessing it from different locations. And when you total all that up, it's about eight days of lost productivity per employee per year using Salesforce. So it's important to really understand how Salesforce works, how to troubleshoot those problems quickly. Uh, but there is a big visibility gap in terms of understanding how to really pinpoint the root cause of Salesforce problems 
And when you see that IT professionals that are responsible for keeping Salesforce up and running and a good digital experience to their users are saying that about 40% of the problems, so one in uh, like two in five that are reported to the help desk, they have no way to really resolve them or even understand where they're coming from. And that goes back to the complexity that we saw before. And that's represented by the many different ways that Salesforce uh, can be impacted in terms of performance. So let's take a look at the, the top four areas where that can happen. You've got um, many different aspects to this. So you have the fact that there's a network connectivity, which is uh, obviously very critical from whether you're working at home or in the office, but it's, it's something that's not just your ISP. Uh, there's a lot more involved in there. It's really the end-to-end -end route from your device through the Wi-Fi, secure gateways going into SD-WAN, if you guys are using those to access it, and then you'll see from our, our demonstration a little later, you're gonna go into some cloud networks as you're getting into different third-party plugins. And there's many different host names around the world for Salesforce and how, where you're directed to depends on your organization, the way it's set up, and also what services you're offering as well as the load balancing that's implicit directly in Salesforce. And then uh, the zero trust network side, which is something that's becoming more popular. So we talk about CASB and SASE access or VPN, the more modern ones are all cloud-based proxies that are out there. So things like Palo Alto, Prisma, Zscaler, Netscope, uh, Microsoft and Cisco have their own, or Fortinet. There's many different solutions uh, that are used now to provide enhanced zero trust security. And they have uh, processing delays. They can also redirect you to different locations uh, in the cloud, depending on where proxies are available and how your IT teams have actually like configured those. So those are a primary uh, source of issues that we see. We'll take a look at that as well. And then of course the hosting performance, um, it's, it's something that you don't see very much as a user where you log into salesforce.com or you have your organization's login screen. You don't see that there's actually like 30 or 40 different hosts running in the background for different services like querying, analytics, reporting, uh, and different uh, ways to enter data, whether you're in the CRM or in your financial module, it's all hosted in different locations. And the response time to load those pages, uh, to, to request data, for it to discuss between servers and bring back those reports can be a, a sincerely a large uh, impact on end users. And then finally, Salesforce being one of the original largest SaaS applications is consumed directly through your browser. So if you're running out of RAM, if you're like me and you got 27 tabs open and maybe even five or six Salesforce tabs open and you don't have enough memory or your computer is busy doing something else, or if you actually had like, for example, a Teams call that takes all your resources, your Salesforce performance is going to be extremely poor. And so we'll look at how we dissect all of those and identify the root cause for problems for individual users, groups of users by location and how they access the network. What you'd need to do to really get a full view into the overall experience of the users and understand what's uh, a cause for the problems that they're experiencing comes from the need for an integrated level of visibility that doesn't come from Salesforce. Their basic uh, reporting dashboards and performance metrics and things that they provide to you guys as admins is pretty frustrating when you're trying to solve a problem. Because really what you need is the ability to understand is Salesforce, the application, the different hosts performing properly, uh, correlate that with the digital experience of the user. So is the application performance actually relating to what the user is trying to do? And then how does the network play into that? Is it actually impacting your ability to reach different hosts? Is it actually related more to the security side of things? So really understanding which components at play requires a, each one of these different perspectives of viewpoints, but also the integration of those. So you can quickly understand that if there's an issue with the network, is it actually impacting application performance and digital experience or is it uh, unrelated? So what we need to do here is make sure that the right team is working on the problem, make sure that they're, the teams that are not responsible are not chasing ghosts and trying to find things based on hypothesis, but they have the evidence to work through the problems very quickly. And the final thing you need is evidence to work with third-party providers, including Salesforce itself. So if there's a problem with Salesforce that originates from their servers, 
how do you have a very clear conversation that explains to them uh, exactly what's happening where so they can resolve the problem and collaborate with you? So that's what we want to look at in terms of understanding how to detect, diagnose, resolve, and optimize these issues, collaborate with them and eliminate the guesswork. So really getting to the root cause of the problem within minutes instead of uh, hunting around for, for potentially weeks for a complex issue. So what we want to do is take a look at a quick demo. It's the best way to actually see how these problems manifest themselves, the impact level, and how you can resolve it is to look at live data from a real uh, Salesforce organization and the users that are experiencing it. And the way we deploy this kind of monitoring has two main components. One is what we call a user watcher, which will be a very simple a browser extension that allows um, you to see what your users are accessing, what transactions they're trying to run, exactly what pages they're accessing, but also which hosts behind it and which uh, third-party plugins might be affecting their performance. So seeing it directly from the browser is the best way to go because that's where the data becomes decrypted and you can actually see all the information. So you can't really do this by using a traditional APM or network performance monitoring technique. And then to complement that uh, is the ability to actively test continuously from key locations or even users' devices directly to these many different host names. So you can see if there's a problem uh, in your local network, Wi-Fi, the, the wide area network, the VPN, and so on. So these are the two pieces of instrumentation that uh, Kadiska provides and that you would need to really get in and see how things are working in terms of Salesforce performance. So let me take you live and show you that data. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to take a look um, at one of our partners' data. So we work with a company in Canada called Layer 8 Solutions. They're uh, one of our leading solution providers. And they have a Salesforce instance, and they have uh, a number of users uh, across the country in Canada that access Salesforce. And what we want to do today is take a look at that and see exactly how their performance is working for each individual end user, and also what the bottlenecks are that are causing the problem. So I'm gonna just reload the page here. It's been open for a while and I wanna make sure it's really dynamic for you guys. So what we can see here on, uh, on our Kadiska's application is there's two main modules. There's the user experience side, which looks at the application and then there's the network side. So we'll take a look at both kind of problems and how we can solve those. First, let's take a look at where our users are today. So we see uh, there's some out west, Calgary, Vancouver. Uh, then we have a, a lot more of them here in Toronto, Ottawa, uh, Montreal, New York State. So we can see here quickly, I'm going to narrow down to Salesforce itself, then the Lightning uh, side of it. So this is a CDN. This is the Lightning servers. And I've got those filtered here. And uh, we want to go take a look at what their users are experiencing. So we can see here that the Salesforce users are largely, um, here's their connectivity latency. It's pretty good on average. You see like 40, 50 milliseconds to reach the servers. The page load time is pretty solid. Uh, but you can also see just at a glance here uh, that the, the real impact or the real experience of these users is defined by waiting for the server to respond. And in this case, it's probably 95% of the problems that could originate from Salesforce for this particular set of users is coming from server uh, delays and server response time, which can be, you know, on average, about a third of a second, and there's errors happening as well. So we'll take a look at why that's happening. Uh, let's take a look first at the users. So you can see the errors, the API calls, which how many pages are being called and how much their time they're taking to load. And then you can see how your users are connecting. So in this case, are they on-site or are they remote? Uh, in this case, we have only a few on-site users. And then we have a lot of remote users. And depending on the ISP that they're connecting in, you can see their experience is quite different. So if you're on Bell Canada, uh, you can see here that it's a very fast experience. But if you're on uh, Rogers or Distributel, you're getting a very different experience where the network setup time is taking almost a third of a second. And then your waiting time, which is really impacting the browser's ability to process things, is extremely poor. So those locations here, wherever they're running on those particular uh, ISPs, are going to have a really um, poor experience. And so if we took a look where they are just quickly, 
Uh, we can see here they're actually both in the Toronto, uh, Toronto region. So we're going to take a look at the network performance for them, understand why they're having this particular experience. But overall, uh, the users are doing pretty well in terms of network connectivity. You can see here uh, they're, they're uh, connecting through uh, corporate firewall. They're also connecting remotely. And overall, the performance is pretty good. You can also get down to the individual users if you wanted to troubleshoot one that was, was uh, having an issue and you wanted to see what they're seeing directly. Let's take a little bit more look at the users themselves. If you wanted to really drill down and see what's causing an issue with them, um, you can see a big spike, for example, in errors here or uh, API call problems. Uh, that's a concern because APIs are what's between you, your browser and um, Salesforce, different hosts. You can also see if their browser is uh, got enough memory and CPU, so you can decide whether or not you think the device itself might be a problem. In this case, it looks pretty clean. So what we're seeing is most of the errors are happening are all API calls. And uh, here's, a, here's a spike that happened, and you can kind of see uh, what's happening in that a time frame, and if we wanted to know exactly what that error was that was impacting the user, we could just go and take a look at the API calls, and you can really go as deep as you need to uh, with the Kaduska tool to understand where the problems are coming from. In this case, uh, there's a 12-second delay on one particular API area or uh, host name, which is the analytics section of Salesforce IQ, which is the small, medium business version of Salesforce. So what you see here is that for the people who are loading this particular uh, area where they're doing running reports with analytics, they're waiting a very long time, uh, more than average, for this particular resource. And that's really what's causing the problem. So you could go and talk to Salesforce about this and give them the information about it. And you can go into much more depth than that if you want to have a very in-depth conversation with them. So this just explains very quickly how you can go from an overview to seeing what the majority of the issues are caused by. You can see how the applications are performing, how the user is experiencing it, and even go as deep as you need to to troubleshoot the issue. But what about the guys in Toronto that were having poor network performance? Let's go take a look. Uh, in this case, we're going to go to the, what we call the network tracer side where we're testing uh, to applications from all the key locations that people are accessing them. So in this case, what I'll do, I'm going to narrow down my target to things that are related to Salesforce, because I'm looking at all the SaaS applications that are being used by that organization. Um, so the CDN is the one, uh, Content Delivery Network is the one you connect to when you're really having those uh, like extended sessions with Salesforce. and then. The platform as a service where you might be hosting things on force.com. Uh, we're going to focus just on those two because they really define uh, the performance of people accessing Salesforce. And you can see here, there's already an indication. There's a lot of packet loss and latency in this region that we were already seeing before from the, the different types of ISPs that we're connecting in. So if we go a little bit in here, we can see uh, these regions are both being impacted. We're going to focus on the area in Toronto. And you can see there's uh, two different sites or users in there that we saw before. And then very quickly, we can go in and understand, you know, how are they accessing um, Salesforce and what does it look like for them? So from that region, you can see uh, from a network connectivity standpoint, Sometimes there's huge spikes in packet loss, so up to 60% packet loss. And uh, same thing in terms of network latency that can increase to 30 seconds or more. And this is meaning um, network latency. You're just, uh, every time you're clicking something or you're trying to navigate between pages in Salesforce, you could be waiting up to half a minute. And uh, it seems to happen on regular intervals. And what this means is there's probably a network route uh, changing that's or a different network problem that's causing this in an intermittent way. So if we wanted to, we could really just focus uh, on like a certain point in time, let's say the last day or so. And then Kadiska uh, is going to map out automatically the routes that are taken uh, to get to those locations. You can see, like we've sh shown before, a lot of cloud network access uh, happening in here. It's a very complex network route, even over the last day or so. So what we want to do, if we want to analyze something like latency, we can simplify this down to, let's say, uh, the 
the like 10 percent or meaning 90 percent of the most common routes where do they go through so you can simplify the diagram a little bit you can see different locations let's say you have an integrated application that's connecting to force.com from aws here's how it's accessing uh, the different servers and then from uh, the toronto office uh, that had that bad connectivity you know how are they reaching into salesforce and what i want to do here is i'm going to focus on the users that are having that trouble so i'm going to remove aws and we're going to focus only on the aws uh, uh, the office connection, and we're going to take a look at that for that period of time where things were just a little bit, <laughs> a little bit badly performing, and we're going to try to figure out why. So, what you have here is the connectivity in that particular period, and you can see the different service providers that are involved in that route. Um, the last ones here, in this case, we're getting to, so we're going to Salesforce hosting. And uh, in California on South Beach, which is just a wonderful place to be, especially if that's where your data is living. And you can also see that uh, some users are accessing Salesforce that's in, in Ontario, Canada. So you're actually accessing different locations depending on what you're trying to access. And the main ISP in this case, uh, Priority Colo passing to different other ISPs like Level 3, and also uh, Tata Communications to get to those different locations, uh, as well as Akamai. So here you have a content delivery network in front of the Salesforce content delivery network that makes it uh, even a little more complicated. So how do we find where the problem is happening from? We've, we can turn on an indicator of delay. And here you have your 30 second, so 30,000 milliseconds of time wasted for every employee trying to take this route. So when you're on that route, which is going through um, a telecom Indonesia. So this is a Canadian site. It's just uh, one of their appearing uh, locations. Every time you're going through this route, I would guess you're going uh, probably through some sort of traffic loop that is going overseas. And then you're ending up eventually uh, back in Canada. So this would be a very easy conversation to have with Salesforce and with your uh, ISP. You can ask them to change your BGP routing table so they would never go to uh, that particular autonomous system that they're peering with, or you could talk to Salesforce and make sure that they have proper caching uh, and CDN access uh, closer to you in the Toronto location. So this is just one really quick example of how you can isolate a problem with users. If the problem is in your network, if it's in your Wi-Fi or your LAN, you would also see that as well. And you can also determine where packet loss is happening in your network. Unfortunately, this is uh, live data. So this is actually happening right now to users in Toronto. And it's uh, it's not that uncommon. And you can see that from the different distributions we have for data uh, that over time, there are sometimes extremely long paths that go to salesforce.com and all the different hosts. So that's what I wanted to show you today. And just a quick demo of that. And this is the kind of solution you can deploy in five to 10 minutes. So you can contact us and we can help you with that. Also on kediska.com, uh, if you go into our learning section, you'll see dashboards and there's one here for Salesforce. And this is a live uh, view of how Salesforce is behaving in around the world. You can also look at North America or Europe and you can see the different latencies uh, to access that from different areas. Um, it should be much quicker than 135 milliseconds. And of course, now you know how we can analyze that as well. You also know where the top impacted regions are globally, as well as the, the top countries and the top cities with the worst latency. And of course, you can zoom into North America if you'd like to go there or Europe and see what's happening in your region. And also you can learn in about five minutes how we can solve that problem and start a free trial with Kodiska if you'd like to give it a shot. Okay, so those are the, the basics of what is driving Salesforce performance and what you can do about it. If you want to try it out, here's the URL to uh, just indicate um, that you'd like to try it. Tell us what region you're in and we'll set that up for you and make sure you have it running um, in just a few minutes. So thanks everyone for joining me. A lot of resources on our website for you to check out uh, for Salesforce performance monitoring, troubleshooting and the causes. So I hope that helps you guys out. And let me know if you have any Salesforce questions we can help you with.